these conversations to a close, but you'll have plenty of opportunities again later this afternoon to carry these on. So I'm Nina, I'm the Vice Chair of the Green Capital Partnership. And what we want to do is kind of give you a bit of an insight of some of the food projects that are taking place within the city. So we're just going to have a quick three-minute uh, update from a couple of groups. So first of all, I would like to introduce to the stage Kalpna Wolf from 91 Ways, and she's going to give you a quick update on her project. It's great. I like applause. You can applause as much as that. There's three minutes here, so I've got to hurry up. So um, the inspiration for my um, project, 91 Ways to Build a Global City, came from, actually, from the uh, Bristol Food Plan and the objectives of the Bristol Food Network, where's Joy, so she knows that. It said, Programme 1 was reaching wider audiences, reconnect, communicate, uh, commu reconnect communities and transform their relationship with food, particularly Bristol's most hard-to-reach communities. Um, and uh, I will stand here and say that I love Bristol. It's a great city, but it's not connected. Um, um, but we have a great diversity and uh, richness here, but um, we could do better in connecting. So 91 Ways is pretty straightforward. Uh, 91 Ways to Build a Global City. I said that I don't think you can build a global city unless you, uh, people are talking to each other and are connected are in, and are engaging. So 91 comes from the languages that are spoken in Bristol, which is fantastic. And our project, um, our intention is to talk to as many people within those communities as possible during this year, connect with them, and talk to them about food. The way we're doing that is to chart their food journeys, uh, because it's very, it's very difficult to go to communities and rather dull. I'm sorry to say this, Gary, to go around saying uh, we want to talk to you about sustainability. So we thought, well, we'll you will use food, and we'll we'll start talking to them about more interesting things. Like, tell us about your food journey. You know, what did you eat as a child? What's your favourite food memory? What did you? What were recipes were made then? And then when we know when we've made that connection and engagement, we said to them, okay, tell us what do you do now? What do you eat? When you know where do you shop? What do you share? Who do you share your food with? So we can see how those um, habits are changing. And then it's our intention, when we have um, a good in close engagement with people, to say, okay, what would you really like to do? You know, what, what changes, what food decisions would you like to make that may be different from the ones that you make now? So we already have some really interesting themes coming out, and I'm hoping that when we have those themes, and we have talked to as many people from those 91 language communities as possible, that we will be able to support them um, in making better food decisions. Um, I firmly believe those decisions and the solutions can't, will come from within the community, so it won't be about talking uh, at them, uh, because there are a lot of good people obviously doing good things too, but it will be great to be able to do that. So that's what we're trying to do, and we hope to make incremental changes, and we may hope to make major connections and uh, deliver uh, great engagement in this year. Great. Thanks ever so much, Kalpana. So, next to give us another inspirational update is Chris Sunderland, and he's from the Real, uh, sorry, the Real Economy Cooperative. Thank you. Um, the Real Economy is a food cooperative based on buying groups, setting up buying groups in neighbourhoods, sourcing food from local producers. Um, we've been going just for a few months. Um, I would love everybody in this room to be part of a buying group, if you'd like to be. Um, we, are, we have already set up buying groups in uh, Loch Lees, Knoll West, Avonmouth, um, Barton Hill, um, places like that. Um, we want a broad spread of buying groups in different areas of the city. Those in the more prosperous areas will be supporting those in the more challenging areas, simply by being part of the cooperative and buying their food through the cooperative. Um, it's a really exciting venture, I believe, to get healthy food at affordable prices to people in the most challenging circumstances, but actually to us all. To create a real alternative to supermarkets is the strapline that I would like to go under. Um, 
so that we can actually live out what we all believe in. Um, someone said to me the other day, I still go to Tesco, but I tell you, I feel really bad when I do. And, and so he was going to be part of a buying group. Um, we know what supermarkets are doing to their producers. It's time to demonstrate in Bristol a real alternative. I think we could here, and I invite you, as I say, all to think about um, being part of a buying group. The uniqueness probably of real economy um, is, is actually that we do these things as buying groups. So it might be just five or ten people in an area, or it might be like at Avonmouth where we're hoping to get 50 people into a buying group working out of Avonmouth Community Centre. But however many it is, the people will get to know one another, that we'll be actually strengthening community life, bringing people from different cultures together, and those sorts of things. And that's what makes it really special for me. Um, it's healthy food from local producers, but it's also strengthening the community life of the city. So I commend to you um, Real Economy Cooperative. So, if you like that, on your, on your tables there's a postcard. Um, text the mobile number on that card to say you're interested in joining a buying group. Do it now, and uh, we'll make sure you, you find out how to do it. Excellent. Thanks ever so much. So it's back out over to Joy now, because I know that you're like having these discussions around the table, and she's going to introduce the next discussion. Thank you. Okay, and thank you all for, for doing that first job. Um, table host, can you please make sure to write the theme on the top of your forms on each paper? So this is the second of our, our metaphor headings. We're we're, we are actually in the hungry gap at the moment. Well, we're coming out of it, but the hungry gap is that sort of late spring time when not a lot's growing because it's not quite warm enough. So the question is, what's missing? So in relation to your theme, whatever it is in food, what priority actions that relate to food and making the food system more sustainable should be happening but it's currently not? And I want you to be as specific as you can. So what is that action? Why is it important? And how could it happen? So you don't need to think about anything other than those three. But this is really important for us because as a city, if we want to be really sustainable, we can do what we're doing now, and that's brilliant. But actually, we're not doing everything we could. So what is it from your particular perspective that's missing? So again, another 20 minutes. Um, there you go, get talking, thank you.